What is up guys, I'm Ikea31 here, bringing you a Madden 17 Ultimate Team game, and got a lot of videos coming up very soon, Fast and Furious, <laughs> but on this one, what I was doing most of the um, weekend when I was not watching football and doing, you know, other things when I was playing Madden was um, seeing what was and was not addressed with the um, tuner that was dropped in, you know, preparation or ahead of the patch that is coming from what I hear relatively soon. And, you know, in doing that, the best way to go about doing that and finding out what's there and what isn't is to go online, play head-to-head, -head, and play some jerk-offs. And this is your classic online Madden Ultimate Team jerk-off that I'm playing right here. And what you're going to see, <laughs> he's coming out in a formation that smells counter or stretch. So I'm coming out in 4-3 wide 9 right away. And I spread the defensive line from wide nine. I'm, I'm in a damn near wide 11. And this fool still tries to spam an outside run. And that tells you all you need to know. These guys think that they can just run outside with stretch, counter, what have you, with impunity. They have no intention or no desire to understand or read a front. They just know that, hey, stretch and counter is the way to go, so I'm going to run it on anything. Now, I think it's here, but, no, it's not here, it's coming up a little bit later, but from what I can see, I don't see any um, discernible difference with how the force defender is behaving on those runs, so that leads me to conclude that that's not going to be addressed until this patch arrives. As far as what I have noticed gameplay-wise, there is, as I screw up a play there, but <laughs> there is a um, definite reduction in the amount of QB sack fumbles. It's not overly drastic, but there are sack fumbles that were sack fumbles uh, before the tuner update that, you know, haven't been called as of now. I don't see any nerfing of the pass rush, which is a positive sign, but it def they definitely did reduce the QB uh, sack fumble frequency. Now, depending on whether or not you're more of a CPU guy playing offline CFM or online head-to-head, -head, you're going to view that, you know, in different ways, I feel. Was the computer quarterback maybe fumbling too much? I would say yes, but from a user head-to-head -head perspective, as I said before, all year since the game has been out so far, the vast majority of QB sack fumbles the user can avoid by simply just playing better. Simple as that. Get rid of the ball quicker. Throw the ball away. Give yourself up. And get your quarterback on the ground and live the fight another down if there's no escape from the um, rush. And you recognize that in time. Stuff like that. I also notice a increase in the amount of uh, tip drill INTs that are actually caught before I think the game was uh, very much APF 2K8-ish in that regard, where a pass would be intercepted and be bouncing off two or three sets of hands. It's not skewed heavily in the other direction, but I definitely see more of those getting um, caught where the ball is uh, deflected up in the air and traffic around defenders and your defender is coming down with it more often when he has the opportunity to do so. And that's really it as far as what I have noticed and what I haven't noticed. Don't see much of a difference as far as the off-tackle run fits, which I find really perplexing because the inside run fits are done very well. And I can't for the life of me figure out why they did what they did with the outside run fits. As I said, you know, leading up to release and shortly after release, I said that a bunch of us who had the opportunity to play test the game and give feedback and all that good stuff, a bunch of us, you know, told Clint and Rex that, hey, these off-tackle runs are going to be a problem. These off-tackle run fits, um, they're too soft. 
Here he's running outside again. And here, Earl Thomas actually comes down from a cover two alignment and comes down and fills the alley. So that gives me hope. That's an encouraging sign that if they can tighten up the screws there on those deep defenders filling the alley, that, you know, we can have something here as far as making people earn those outside runs. But, you know, as I was saying, it really boggles my mind that the run fits to the outside were designed as soft as they were. And I gotta say that I had some disappointment in the Madden community. I'm seeing a lot of comments along the lines of, it's no fun getting sacked and fumbling so much. The game is no fun when defensive linemen can sack me so fast. Guys were complaining that it was harder to kick accurately in the rain and in the snow, so they tuned that. It's not fun when my wide receiver drops a pass. And you know what? I'm not seeing this. I'm not seeing these comments from just the casuals now. I'm seeing these comments also being made like that from the so-called hardcore sim heads too. Y'all are exposing yourselves. And what I fear happening to this game is what happened to NBA 2K16. When that game came out and it was hard and the community bitched and moaned and four or five patches later, that game was damn near unplayable. One patch, all your green perfect releases were going in. The next patch, your green releases weren't going in. The next patch, your defender user control player movement was all jacked up. The next patch, it was your AI teammates going all crazy. You just didn't know what you were going to get, and a lot of people just said, screw this. I'm just going to trick around and play in the park. I do not want that to happen to this game. As far as my expectations for this patch, I really need to see this force defender issue addressed. I also need to see this um, closing speed again. What a complete dope. I need to see that addressed. I need to see the closing speed out of the deep zone defenders addressed. These deep zone defenders have a way of just kind of drifting and not being aware of um, route distribution deep. Even corners will have this problem on a smash concept. When the um, outside receiver runs the hitch, he just does not break on the corner route by number two until well after the ball is thrown instead of recognizing it. Again, he's just consisting on trying to run outside. He's got minus three yards on four carries when I'm all but begging him to run between the tackles. I'm giving him the between the tackle run, but he does not want it. Moron. But this is the type of gamer that, you know, the YouTube and the online community produces at times. They feel entitled to have certain things work. No. You gotta earn it, buddy. You want your outside run to work? You gotta run it against the front that it'll work against and against personnel that it's gonna, you know, block against. You just don't have a divine right to run it out there. But anyway, those are really my only two defensive complaints about the game as of right now. You know, outside of the legacy man coverage issue that I brought up, you know, earlier. So, really, if they can tighten those things up, I have very few complaints about how this game plays. As far as mechanics and as far as um, AI and whatnot is concerned. Tighten up the force defenders. Half people have to respect quality edge setters out there and tighten up the closing speed of the um, deep zone coverage. The underneath hook, curl flat, flat, seam flat zones, they got a lot of love. I know drags annoy people, but the fact of the matter is a shallow cross is a pretty high percentage route concept. A bad QB should be hitting 65 to 70 percent of those suckers bare minimum. And what teams do, they decide when they want to take the drag away, they'll take the drag away. Someone asked me, what do teams do in real life to um, stop drags? They do a couple of things. One, they'll, you know, cheat on their splits with their corners. They'll cheat inside, squeeze and play man one robber. 
The other is simply closing faster. Most teams are going to let routes that develop five yards and under go and then use their closing speed and reaction to cut down on Yak. In this game, you know, you got to play your hard flats at the right time. Maybe drop a guy into a spy or a hook. Or if you're playing man coverage, um, cheat on a crosser and then bait a guy into throwing to the other one and, and react to that. And here I actually give up a run here. He actually runs between the tackles and I do a belly flop with my user free safety. So he actually did something smart there for once. But back to what I was saying, man coverage can be dicey at times because again, legacy issues with man coverage as far as false steps are concerned, especially out of these compressed sets, um, creates artificial separations. So that isn't always ideal. And if you're playing someone with a brain, it can be very difficult to deal with. So they really got to clean up player movement as it relates to man coverage and man coverage technique to allow us to uh, leverage these routes. That and deep zone coverage, closing speed, those are the two last frontiers when it comes to coverage in this game. And plus, you know, more fleshed out defensive playbooks and schemes and whatnot. But um, overall, you know, those are my expectations for the patch. From what I understand, this patch is pretty substantial, so it's just a matter of it getting here. So that's really all I got to say about that. This game is about to conclude. Love to hear your guys' thoughts as you watch how the end of this bad boy plays out. And I will talk to you all later. Peace. Here's Cousins. And he's able to find Diggs. And he's brought down after a good game. Back and down. Again, they'll run with Freeman. 20. And all the way in. Touchdown.